Receivables and Payables Basics Problem 3. In year one, Corn Inc. billed its customers $57,300 for services performed. The company collected $41,500 of the amount billed. Corn incurred $36,700 of other operating expenses on account. Corn paid $24,000 of the accounts payable. Corn acquired $26,000 cash from issuing common stock. The company invested $20,000 cash in the purchase of land. Complete and calculate the following. Revenue, cash flow from revenue and net income, cash flow under the three activities, operating, investing, and financing activities, and the total assets, total liabilities, and total stockholders' equity. We have a lot to do here. The best thing to do is determine these transactions based on the accounting equation, assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. Specifically, it's a corporation, so stockholders' equity. Now, let's go through each transaction starting with, in year one, Corn Inc. billed its customers $57,300 for services performed. We'll call that transaction A. Transaction A, we're going to look and see how that affects the accounting equation. I'm going to provide the accounts. We've got cash, accounts receivable, and land in terms of our assets. For liabilities, we have accounts payable. And then for equity, specifically stockholders' equity, we have common stock, and we've got retained earnings. And of course, if we do have retained earnings, I'm going to specify what kind of account it is. So let's go ahead and put some little addition signs here in our equals. Okay. A, build its customers $57,300 for services performed. Thinking about the accounting equation, do we have any cash? No, no cash. What about accounts receivable? Well, we're billing customers, so that means our accounts receivable is going up by 57300 No land. What about accounts payable? No accounts payable. What about common stock? No. What about retained earnings? Yes. We have sales. So we have sales here, or revenue. And remember, retained earnings, when you have equity, equity is wire. The I in wire goes to common stock, and the W, which is withdraws the R for revenues and the expenses, go to retained earnings. So this is going to be revenue. Revenue increases retained earnings by the amount, 57300 So our accounting equation, it balances. Okay, next transaction. The company collected $41,500 of the amount billed. So B collected $41,500. Now it doesn't say what, but remember, in accounting, if you're not told what it is, it's assumed to be cash. So $41,500 cash of the amount billed, which is in the first transaction. So we have B, transaction B. Okay, cash, yes. We collect $41,500. What about accounts receivable? That goes down. When you collect what you bill, the idea is that the services have already been provided. We record asset of a future amount. Now we're collecting that amount. So we reduce accounts receivable by $41,500. No land and then nothing on the other side. Look at that. The accounting equation, it balances. C, transaction C. Corn incurred $36,700 of another operating, I'm sorry, of other operating expenses on account. Okay. Anything on the left side of the equation? No, no assets because we're not paying cash. Uh, no accounts receivable or land. What about on the right side? Accounts payable goes up by the amount because we owe. We're putting this on account. Anytime, or actually said, um, anytime you see the phrase on account, either accounts receivable or accounts payable. Here, because the company is, it's an outflow, right? It's expenses. It's going to be accounts payable are going up. Therefore, accounts payable increases by $36,700. And then when you look at retained earnings, we have expenses, right? We have these operating expenses. The expenses are going up, but when expenses go up, there's an indirect relationship with retained earnings. Retained earnings is going to go down by $36,700. And look at that. The accounting equation balances. All right, next transaction, D. Corn paid $24,000 of the accounts payable. Okay, so D. Cash is going down by $24,000 because we're paying off. And then accounts payable is going down by $24,000 because it's no longer owed. All right, next transaction. We're told that Corn acquired $26,000 cash. That's transaction E from issuing common stock. 
we can go ahead and put that on there. We're receiving $26,000 of cash. And then we've got common stock issuance of 26,000. And we're done with that transaction. And then the last one is the company, which is F, the company invested $20,000 cash in the purchase of land. So F, cash is going down by $20,000 and land is going up by $20,000 and the accounting equation balances. We can now get all of our balances on the accounting equation. So the balance in cash is going to be 23000 500. The balance in accounts receivable is going to be 15,800. The balance in land is going to be $20,000. The balance in accounts payable is going to be 12,700. Common stock balance is 26,000. And the retained earnings balance $20,600. Now by doing the accounting equation, we're asked for different items, complete calculate. By doing this, it helps us determine most of these items. We can do this now. All right, we're asked to do calculate the revenue, cash flow from revenue, net income, cash flow under three activities, and the total assets, liabilities, and stockholders equity. I like to do the uh, accounting equation because the horizontal approach helps you understand because it shows how it goes onto the balance sheet and also it takes care of the other statements specifically the income statement, you've got your revenues and expenses, all that's given to you. It makes it a lot more easy and manageable. So the first thing we're asked, the revenue. We're asked about revenue. And I'm going to use different colors to get to different things. So for revenue, I'm going to pull out red. We're asked about the revenue. The revenue amount, we're told, is $57,300 of revenue. It's the only item. Of course, we'd have to sum other items together, but that's the only one. So it's $57,300. The cash flow from revenue Let's look at that. That's going to be the amount of cash we received from the actual revenue. I'm going to use another color. Let's use blue. Actually, let's use green. Sorry. Let's use green. Now, looking at transactions A and B. In transaction A, we billed customers $57,300 for services performed. The company collected only $41,500 of the amount billed. Nothing else in the problem tells us about the specific revenues and how much was collected or whatnot. So that means that the 41500 of cash we collected from that transaction, that is the amount of cash flow from revenue. The remaining portion, the $15,800, that amount, that amount is still out there. It has yet to be collected. So the cash flow from revenue is only $41,500. All right. Next is net income. So net income, this one is pretty simple. I'm going to turn back to our uh, original color, the light blue. All we're going to do to get net income, we're going to bring these two numbers up here. So net income is just going to be the revenue minus the expenses. So net income equals 57,300 minus the 36,700. So the amount of net income is $20,600. Easy. Very easy to calculate that. So net income I did in the light blue. All right. So it's just like that. Boom. Using this accounting equation, we just flew through those questions right there. And it's going to make our, our lives a lot easier for the other items as well, especially total assets, liabilities, and stockholders equity. Now we need to tackle the cash flow under the three activities. I'm going to change to purple for this one. So let's use purple. And I'm going to use purple for operating. So for the operating, and the way the easiest way to do this using our accounting equation is just to focus on the cash line item. So just the cash line item. We have four changes to cash. And that's where you have the statement of cash flows items because those items affect cash. Going through the four transactions, transaction B was collecting amount owed of the revenue. D was paying a liability, paying off a liability for expenses. E was um, the issuing of common stock, and F is the purchase of land. So think about the operating activities. 
If you're collecting revenue and paying expenses, that's going to be operating activities. If you are issuing common stock, that's going to be financing activities. And if you are doing investing in land, that's investing activities. So B and C are operating activities. So we have, B, I'm sorry, B and D, my apologies, are operating activities. That is the cash collected from the revenues and the cash paid for expenses. So we're going to take those two amounts and that's going to equal our net cash from operating activities from these transactions. So the 41500 minus the 24000 the operating amount is going to be 17500 net cash from operating activities. Now we're going to do investing activities, keeping in order. So let's do the investing activities. This will be in pink. So the investing for cash flows, so the cash flow investing activity, that's going to be transaction F where we purchase the land. So that's going to be, it's the only item, equals negative 20000 a negative $20,000 cash outflow for the purchase of land. And finally, we get to the financing activity, so cash flow and financing activity, which I'll use white. This one is just one number left. It's the only a, a number left. Put a line here. The cash flow from financing activity is going to be this transaction E, the issue in common stock. That's going to be a cash inflow of $26,000. $26,000 cash inflow. So that's the cash flow under the three activities. Again, the key is to focus on the cash line item, those four transactions, focusing on those four transactions. All right, we finished everything except for the total assets, total liabilities, and the stockholders equity. All we have left to do there is we just need to tally up the amounts of assets, liabilities, and stockholders equity. And this is going to be easy because all we have to do is go to our accounting equation. This is this is the real reason. We wanted to save it for the big the big finale. To get the total assets, we go to our accounting equation and we sum up the assets at the end. And the total assets are going to equal 59,300. Total liabilities, that's just the 12,700 amount. There's only one number number. And then total stockholders equity, we sum together the two numbers, we get 46,600. And we've just gone through all of this. Woo! A lot of information here. I know a lot of stuff. Make sure you go over this multiple times. I know it got a little messy at times. I try to change up with the different colors. But you can see using the accounting equation, the horizontal approach really helps you best understand what's going on. And then from that, you can then take apart this information and assemble it in a way that will help you answer the questions.